Give it two. Give it three. Cover me up. I have a one question to ask. Anybody ready to go walk with me? Yes, sir. Anybody ready to go walk with me? Yes, sir. Ah. War time. War time. You gonna make your name today? You understand? Yes, sir. One clock. Two clock. How you feel? How you feel? Mill Creek Hawks taking on Lawrenceville Black Knights in the 12 and earned division. Everybody knows about the Mill Creek Hawks are the defending GFL champions, but this would be all about the Lawrenceville Black Knights as their defense was very, very impressive as they led them to a 13-0 victory over Mill Creek. We all be what? We all be gay. We all be what? We all be gay. We all be what? We all be gay. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Hi, I'm Matt Stewart, 11 Alive Sports. Uh, be sure to check out the Team 1-1 show every Friday night, 1030 on the ATL and also 1115 on 11 Alive. Let's get to the big game ready. Highlights the number four Georgia Thoroughbreds taking on the Georgia Rattlers. The Thoroughbreds led by Zy Bonner, very physical running back. And the Rattlers led by Richard, outstanding defensive lineman, likes to create havoc in the backfield. Hope you're ready for a treat. Big game ready style. Undefeated Georgia Rattlers taking on the undefeated Georgia Thoroughbreds. Heard him say, Who got my back? Who got my swag? And look at this by number six. I'm telling you what, this is a very underrated running back here. Runs tough, gets behind his pads, does what he needs to do. But here on the fake, number four gets to the outside, outruns a couple of people, gets into the end zone, and Georgia Thoroughbreds would lead early in this game. But the Georgia Rattlers, they haven't been in a big time game in a while, but that doesn't mean they're not ready for the spotlight. And you see number two breaks off a huge run here, getting inside the red zone. And then here in the same series, they'll give it to their running back, and he gets into the end zone, giving Georgia Rattlers a lead. And on the following kickoff, oh, you know it's showing it for one or two reasons. It went good for somebody, went bad for another person as they recover the kickoff on an onside kick for the Georgia Rattlers. And then later in the possession, big time hit by the linebacker, but number 55 jumps on it in the end zone and recovers it for a TD, and then that's when number 55 would flat out just take over. Look at this right here as the big D end runs from sideline to sideline, getting the tackle for his team, and then here, quarterback waiting, waiting, waiting. Good job, coverage downfield, and helps number 55 get the quarterback sack. But then the Georgia Rattlers will finally get things going, as all they had to do was run downhill and give the ball to number six, or at least that's what he said in the huddle, as they give him the ball and gets down the field, getting in the red zone for his team. And then here with the fake, you can hardly see him, but good pass as they pass at number 10. Number 10 scores a touchdown for his team, and then they have to get the extra point. As they do, the running back gets into the end zone, scoring the point for him. Now with the Georgia Thoroughbreds leading, 13 to 12, big time tackle by the corner on the outside, and Georgia Thoroughbreds will end up winning the game. You know, we made some mistakes, man. You know, it wasn't a game that we prepared for, but hey, you got to make adjustments. We made adjustments. The line did their thing, and my defensive coach held his own. Like I told him, he get me the ball back, we put in the end zone, that we did we just do. that. Hey, we coming to get you, Jonesburg. Get you call us out. We here, baby. Yeah! Get your popcorn ready. Get whatever you need to get ready, as this is going to be a good one. North Paul and Wolfpack taking on the McEachern Indians in the eighth grade division of the GMSAA. And this is big time football here. As number nine steps in front of the pass, gets the interception, returns the ball into the McEachern side of the 50, giving them favorable ball position. And then here you know what they're going to do. They're going to give it to one of the most underrated players in the country. Number 25, Paris Brown, goes around left end, gets it to the end zone, and McEachern would lead early in the game. But then again, as we always say, this is a North, different North Pauling Wolfpack team. That's bang right there. Good hit by number 24. I tell you what, this doesn't look like the same team from a couple years ago, but they are physical. They have added that element. And then look at the pass by Ross. Good pass by him, great catch by the receiver. Gets down to the one-yard line, running back in the O-line, take care of the rest of the drivers. They power into the end zone for a one-yard touchdown run. And then here, North Paul and Roller. 
They get it out there, receiver number 24. Look at the blocking by the receivers. He makes a couple of people miss, and here is just all speed. And don't you let one man bring you down. Hits him with a stiff arm, gets it to the end zone. But it is a penalty as there is Laundry on the field, and then Makicha will peel their ears back. And ooh, woo, big time hit by number 25. And then here, they're just flat out coming. As a quarterback from North Paul and did all he could just to not fumble the ball. But it was a good game at the half. Makicha would lead at the half. And then here will be all North Paul. Oh, my goodness. Look at the play by number 72. Push the blocker down. Hit the running back and make a play for your team. Then here they go back to their running back, number 24. Usually plays receiver, Zion Hawkins. This time they put him in the backfield, and he was just dominant with over 200 yards rushing. If you talk about big game ready, that's exactly what he was. But North, or excuse me, McKeecher, not knowing how to lose, not knowing how to give up. The coach always asks, do you want to be good or do you want to be great? And McKeecher is answering the bell as they are trying to get back in this game. But here they go with a tunnel screen. Oh, it's too high. It's picked off by North Paulding. You see the crowd going crazy as North Paulding would end up knocking off McKeecher in this game. Great game. That's a very good football team. They did a lot of things defensively to take things away from us. But this team finds ways to win the game. Today we showed our O-line, our backs. We get after it, we get downhill, and we got all over them and ran the football. It was really, really fun to see. It was a great game against a very good opponent. Enjoy it. Eighth grade division, Calhoun Jack is taking on the Cartersville Canes in the middle school division in North Georgia. And watch this play here. Oh, he got behind the safety, the corner, the whole secondary. And it is a 60-yard touchdown for number two. Great pass by number 11. And then here with the field goal. Great field goal by the kicker, number 17, as he kicks a 20-plus-yard field goal. And then here, number 11. Gets a little bit of pressure. Number 22 is on the outside, catches the ball, and he's down the sideline, making one man miss, then gets pushed out of bounds, picking up positive yards for Calhoun Jackets. And then number one, going with a little bit of Wildcat zone read. Tough running back, number one, gets into the end zone, too close to not get in. Hits him with a little bit of Tebow as he scores a touchdown for Calhoun Jackets. And watch number 49. Woo-woo! Big boy got the ball. Big, no boy, big boy knows what to do with it. Then they go with a little bit of zone option here for number seven. But it is a fumble as number nine will pick the ball up for the Calhoun Jackets. And then what do you do over a big turnover? Hit him with a big play as the coach has a little bit of trickeration for him as they throw a nice touchdown pass to number two. Cartersville Canes looking to punt after being stopped. But they hit him with a, <laughs> I guess the coach, this is a game, a game of trick plays as the coach had a trick play in for the Cartersville Canes. And then Cartersville Canes try to go around left side, but number four forces the fumble, and number 71 picks it up for the Calhoun Jackets. And watch this catch here by number nine. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, as a former receiver in college, I got to love the way his ball skills were when he went up in the air to go get the ball. No pressure on him. But here, number 11 passing number two, and that would be the ball game as Calhoun Jackets will end up winning the championship. Uh for the last week, uh, we've just prepared on everything they've done to us before and what they've done to other people. And uh, we've had a lot of help from the high school staff as well. And um, we just got a bunch of guys behind me here that will just get after it and do what they coach to do. All in on three, baby. One, two, three, all in. This is a game everybody wanted to see in the eight and under division. College Park Rams taking on the Welcome All Panthers. And usually we show a lot of offensive highlights, but look. The coach from Welcome All Panthers said, let's name the whole entire defense the Born to Compete player of the game. And that's just what we did. As you see, this defense performance was absolutely outstanding, astonishing, dominating. I'm running out of words to say, but that is just what they did as they would end up winning the game 14 to zero over a very good College Park team. We prepared for this game the whole week. We got a good three days of practice in and we did a walkthrough on Friday. So we definitely was prepared for this team. We heard all that smackhead they had been talking about telling everybody this is why they number two and welcome all is number five. Well now it's gotta be real range. You got to real range to break it now. Rick Flair three times. Now turn around and do the Michael Jackson. Yeah. 
Hey guys, Alex was born to compete. I know you see the shirt. No daddy ball is on the shirt. B2C clothing line coming out very soon. Make sure you check it out. And another announcement that we have, Children's Healthcare of Atlanta having their family tennis tournament October 25th, 26th. So make sure you register, go out, enjoy it, have a great time. But right now, let's go to the Gresham Park versus Georgia Thoroughbreds for the 11 under division. Paul's already out there. Over to you, Paul. Hey, thanks, Alex. It's Paul with B2C. Right now, Gresham Park taking on the Georgia Thoroughbreds. Thoroughbreds are going to be looking for a big game from their quarterback, number six, Damian Fitzpatrick. He's quite a talent. We'll see if Gresham Park can counter with their big number two, Mr. Alvin. Let's check out the highlights. Gresham Park versus the Georgia Thoroughbreds. Very talented running back for Gresham. This is Alvin taking it right. He's going to shake a couple off and get the first down. But this is going to be a defensive struggle. Gresham unable to score there. And here's Fitzpatrick trying to make something happen. Brought down in the backfield by number 60. Big day for him. But then they're going to put the ball right down on the turf. And the Thoroughbreds would recover lots of miscues for Gresham in this game. But they've got some defense too. Guess who? Bam, that's number 60, laying down the lumber. Once again, a great hit there, but the Thoroughbreds are going to break through. Here's a fantastic pass from Fitzpatrick right in the bread basket of his receiver, and that's going to set this up on the very next play, faking everyone out. He's going to take it into the end zone, faked me out, and they're going to go up 6-0 to on that run. Gresham trying to answer, and they're going to put it on the ground again. You just can't do that against a team as talented as these thoroughbreds. Another shot here for Gresham. When you got a guy like Alvin, you can just feed him the rock and know that he's going to get yards most of the time. A great run there, shaking a guy off. Too much defense from the thoroughbreds, though. Here they are plugging up the middle. No running room whatsoever for Gresham. They've got a defense too, though. Here they have a chance for an interception and just unable to get it. Could have turned the tide there, and the Thoroughbreds are going to make you pay. Here's a strong run right up the gut, and he's going to be able to cut it left, shake a guy off. He's going to go for the first down. A very nice run there for the Thoroughbreds, and they're showing us what quarter it is. It's time to finish strong, say the Thoroughbreds, and... Well, that's going to help. Gresham puts it right on the ground for them. They're going to recover, and that's one mistake too many. Here they are going to make them pay. They sell the fake flip, and he's going to take it right and then cut it back to the middle of the field. Yeah, you can forget about that. He is going to leave you in the dust. He takes it all the way down to about the six-yard line, and then on the very next play, here's the give, and you can forget it. He's gone. Touchdown. They're going to win it 19-0. And the Thoroughbred fans letting us know where they belong in the polls. Coach, that was a great game. Your defense pitched a shutout. You put points on the board. You couldn't want much more from your guys. Give me your thoughts on the game. Man, you know, one thing about it, you know, Gresham, man, you know, we've been having this rivalry for a minute. And we know for a fact, you know, we can't give them much. Because if we give them a little bit, hell, man, they feel like they got us. So we wanted to focus on giving them nothing. That was our goal this week. And we wanted to focus on putting that, them zero points up, and we did it. Six and under division, two very good teams. Gresham Park Rattlers out of the Georgia Extreme Youth Football League playing Locust Grove. <laughs> and, and the coach always wears the goggles there. for the, He says it's for the kids, and, but it's still funny, coach. But what is not funny and what is serious business is number four from Gresham Park Rattlers taking it 47 yards down the right sideline to give Gresham Park the lead. And then here later on in the game, watch number one, making a couple of people miss, reading the hole, getting in there, getting into the end zone, and Gresham Park would lead early in this game, 12-0. But late in the game, coach from Locust Grove, Coach Kev, tell his boys not to give on them, give up on them. That's just what they do as they continue to battle back hard, score a touchdown late, but Gresham Park would still win the game 12-7. I think everybody did well, defense and offense. We got to keep continue to prepare. We want to come out here and see how well we perform when we come out B2C. And we we did kind of come out well, 12, 12, 7. So we did a great job. I appreciate we congratulate all the boys and all the coaches for the hard work. We work hard Tuesday through Thursday. And Paris, we love them too. So congratulations to all the boys. Now on to Locust Grove, 12 and under playing East Metro's 12 and under, and nice play action. And the pass to number seven, that's good. That's as good as you're gonna go see. And watch this run here by number 28. 
Locust Grove fighting to get back in this game. Make a couple of people miss. Runs through another tackle. Gives another one a stiff arm. And that is a heck of a touchdown run by that young man, number 28 from Locust Grove Falcons. But it would just be too much East Metro. As number 40 gets around the left sideline, stays in bounds, and it's just all speed here. As East Metro will end up winning the game. Went out there, fought hard into all four quarters and came back with a win. All right, guys, Alex Born to compete. Hope you are enjoying the highlights, but let's take a look now in Clayton County. If you remember some of those names, Preston Williams, Eric Sweeney, so many more, MJ Walker, Zary Cooper, those are names that we all know about that are some of the top players in the country in their class. But right now there's a new batch coming in, and we're talking about at that Kendrick Comets, Kevon playing linebacker number seven. Listen, if he isn't one of the best linebackers in the country, you're going to have to sit me down and show me somebody else because he, he can drop back in coverage. He can come up in the run. And when he gets to the ball, listen, what do I love more than when you get to the ball and you get there with bad intentions? Check the highlights out. Clayton County Middle School. Great action in the Clayton County Middle School playoffs. Kendrick, one of the top ranked teams in the state, taking on Rex Mill in the first round of the Clayton County playoffs. But watch number three. He said he was not ready for his season to end as look at this running here, running like a man possessed, putting number seven on his back. And number seven is one of the top linebackers in the country as he gets some positive yards to Rex Mill. And then here getting behind his pads, getting behind his linemen, believing in what they're going to do as far as opening that hole up for him. And he scores a touchdown, giving Rex Mill an early lead in this game. And then here, it wasn't a planned onside kick, but this, since nobody from Kendrick wanted to get on the ball, that's exactly what Rex Mill is going to do as they recover the kickoff. And then here, number three, told you he was making plays all game long. As look at that there. Catch it between the corner and the safety. Do what you need to do. Get into the end zone, and Rex Mill will lead early, but then number four would take over as he is running the ball. And then here on fourth down, fourth and goal, they got to score as he gets into the end zone and they tie the game up 12 to 12. All important conversion. Number one tips it to himself, makes a catch, and Kendrick Thomas would lead 13 to 12. But Rex Mill would not give up. Oh, that's a big time hit by number seven, the linebacker. But again, back to Rex Mill, they throw it deep, but it is Kendrick Thomas who would win the game as number 10 gets the interception as defense would seal the game for him. We got a good team here. Uh, we practice every day. We practice hard. Our coach tell us, don't, don't ever put your heads down. Stay up. I, I just, I just love my team. I just love my yeah. team. Yeah. 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 Clayton County Middle School playoffs. Bad Bulldogs taking on MD Roberts. And watch this run here by number four. Looks to pass, doesn't see anybody open. Gets around the right sideline, getting the ball in the red zone for the Bad Bulldogs. And then later on in the play, bang right there at the goal line. Number 32 with a good hard run gets to the end zone and Bad Bulldogs will lead early. Then watch that block by number 25. Look out as number 18 gets around the right sideline, gets some positive yards for the MD Robert Rams. And then here later in the game, later in the drive, excuse me, number 20 would just take over as he gets a quarterback sack. And then on the following play, again, blitzing from the outside, gets another quarterback sack. Think somebody will put a hat on him, but they don't. He gets two quarterback sacks back to back. And here's where number four will take over. Good block by number five. Number four will put his foot in the ground. And after this, it's just all speed. This young man can absolutely go when he gets the ball in his hands giving Bad Bulldogs the lead in the game. As you see the cheerleading coach there cheering them on, but MD Roberts would not give up as they go to number 13. He gets into the end zone and MD Roberts would be getting closer back in this game, but late in the game on third down. They need to convert to make to close the game out. That's just what number four does as he gets the first down and Bad Bulldogs would advance to the next round. Hey, it was a great game. These guys had beat us the last four times. We talked to the guys about stepping up, stopping about effort, 110, and they came out and did a great job. Great job, guys. Oh, yeah! yeah! One of the yeah! Six and under division in the YFA. Georgia Elite taking on one of the top ranked teams in the state, the Central Cab Jaguars. And then what starts out as a good play, nice stiff arm by the running back from Georgia Elite. 
but the center of the Cavs, Jaguars safety number 12, comes downhill and makes a great play on the ball. And then here with the play action, number 33 gets around the left side. Great blocking downfield by number six. As number 33 turns it into a touchdown for the Central Cavs Jaguars. Then here with a toss again, number four gets in the backfield. Great play on the ball as the rest of his teammates will back him up and they make the tackle. Then here going with the toss, number 23 steps in front of the toss. Gets the ball, doesn't know what to do with it, but he just says he's going to keep running this way, and that's exactly what he does. Then great blocking up front, but even better run by number 10 as he breaks three tackles. Gets into the end zone, and Central Cat will end up winning the game. In the GFL, Mill Creek taking on the Mountain View Bears, and Mill Creek is just that good as watch number two gets the ball going around the left side, and he will score a touchdown for the Mill Creek Hawks. Then later in the game, number 10 backs up to pass the ball. Pass the ball to his receiver. He gets some positive yards from Mill Creek. And then later in the game, going with the Wildcat, they give it a number two. He gets in the end zone as he would give Mill Creek more of a lead there. And then, of course, number two. I tell you what, the young man could just flat out put on a show. I tell you what, I don't know if anybody wants to see it, but I know everybody in the B2C world wants to, and that is Sandtown. Pops taking on Mill Creek at the end of the season as Mill Creek will end up winning the game. Two top 10 ranked teams in the 6 and under division. Atlanta Vikings taking on the Rockdale Bulldogs. And look at the offensive line just push people off the ball as they make it easy for number five to go ahead and get in the end zone. And then later in the game, number one going around the right side, gets to the end zone, and Atlanta Vikings would lead early and big in this game. <laughs> nice little helmet by little man there. And number five to end the highlights off with score again as Atlanta Vikings would end up beating the Rockdale Bulldogs. And we, and once we pound, 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 we get that track to move, we gone. <laughs> That Purple Gold Camaro, baby. It's like this hill. You feel what I'm saying? Hey, hey, give it up, y'all. Give it up. Give it up, y'all. Hey, 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 I got one thing to say, though, man. I got the best parents in the world, man. Yes. Yeah. The best parents in the world. Hey, yeah. without these people right here, there won't be no people right here. Y'all understand right, me? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
listen, when you make it this high in the top 10 plays, that means you had a true impact on the game. And this was an interception for North Paulding to seal the football game against McKeetrin. Great game by that team. At number one, nothing like a game winner. The game winning catch as number one would help Kendrick win the game, and those are your top 10 plays of the week. Hey, Alex, it's Paul with V2C. This is the Park Pride segment on the Georgia Thoroughbreds. I'm here with Coach Terry. This is a great atmosphere for football, Coach. You've got a ton of people out here. The field looked great. How are you feeling about this season? Well, it's been an excellent season. We have uh, ages 6 through 14. All of our teams are doing great in Georgia Extreme. Uh, we're glad that you guys are out here filming this game. I think you guys came out and filmed the 12 and under game for number one. Uh, a lot of our teams are uh, doing great. We got good parent support, as you see, good teams playing. Most of our teams are ranked number one. We don't get into uh, in, inside the Georgia Extreme. Uh, one of the things we try to focus on is uh, building our kids in the, in the classroom as well on the field, building uh, a dual athlete. So right now, you know, we do a tutoring during the week as well as on, on Wednesdays with our athletes. And Tuesday and Thursday, we focus on some of the hitting and then special teams and different things that the parents have in order. We, uh, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm very excited about this year. This is probably one of our best years, 6 through 14, that we've had in four years. Off to a great start so far this season. A balanced approach here from Coach Terry. Alex, back to you. Well, Alex, tell us about this week. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, I think it's the Georgia Thoroughbreds year. You saw what the Georgia Thoroughbreds and the Georgia Rattlers. Georgia Rattlers haven't been on the stage in a long time, but they came out, they competed, they came up short. But at the end of the day, Georgia Thoroughbreds just looked like the team to beat in the Georgia Extreme. And then with North Paulding and McKeestrin, I can't remember, in all honesty, the last time I saw a team, a team this good, play well at every level of the football, D-line, O-line, running backs, linebackers, secondary, receivers, quarterbacks. They are so good at every level. They are hard to beat, man. So I just enjoyed the show, man. I hope you enjoyed it. And just imagine if Taj Griffin hadn't gotten hurt in the season opener. Outstanding, super show. We'll see you back here next week. Take care.